Hi, today we're introducing the new position control feature of some of our newer motor controllers. As the name implies, it allows you to precisely control the position of your motors. Let's start with a quick demonstration of what a position controller can do. Here we have a DCC-1000 motor controller fidget hooked up to a small weighted motor and an encoder which will give us position feedback. Right now, the motor is disengaged, so I can move it pretty freely. If I engage the position controller, it'll track to a given position and fight to hold it. This motor is pretty weak, so I can move it with my fingers. If I disengage the motor, it flops back down. In order to get the motor to smoothly track to its target position, we had to tune the position controller. This is an important step of any closed loop system. Here's a program we made in order to assist you in tuning your motor. Before we get into the specifics of tuning, it's good to know a little bit about how the motor controller works. Our position controller uses a PID loop to track a trapezoidal motion profile to allow for better control of your motors. What this means is that you have control over the acceleration and velocity of your motor, which you wouldn't have with a regular PID loop. I'll outline the target position change in black. With a basic PID system, the controller will try to track the end position as quickly as it can given its parameters. You can adjust the approach by changing these parameters, but you still have little control over the overall motion of the motor. With trapezoidal motion profiling, your controller plots a series of points between the starting and target positions that follow a set acceleration and velocity profile. You can easily adjust this profile by setting acceleration and velocity directly. So now let's get back to tuning the controller. First, we'll talk about KP, KI, and KD, and how they can be used to achieve smooth motion from your motor. When you first open the program, you're met with the default values. First, we'll set a rescale factor. We've covered how to calculate this in another video. Next, we'll set KI and KD to zero. Next, we'll engage the motor, set an increment, and set a position. As you can see, it doesn't quite make it. Since it didn't make it, let's try doubling KP. Gets a little bit closer. Next, let's add some KI. This compensates for error over time and brings your final error closer to zero. Now, we'll set a different target position. As you can see, it's kind of shaky on the way there. We can smooth this out by adding some KD. After additional tweaking of the settings, I've come up with these values for KP, KI, and KD. We'll now discuss how acceleration and velocity come into play. For this demonstration, my velocity is half a revolution per second, and my acceleration is 10 revolutions per second squared. If I increment my position, you can see the motion is quite linear. If I reduce my acceleration to 0.1, you can see the difference. Now I've reset my velocity and acceleration to 0.5 and 10 respectively. If I increment my position, the motor moves. If I reduce my velocity to a fifth of that at point 0.1, the motor moves at a fifth the speed. If you check the duty cycle, it's interesting to note that the motor fights the other way to maintain speed on the way down. It's important to note that the velocity limit is not a hard limit on the motor's velocity. If it falls behind its generated path, it will exceed its velocity limit in order to catch up. Lastly, let's talk about deadband. Deadband refers to a region on either side of the target position in which control of the motor is relaxed. This prevents the controller from continually hunting for the target position. I hope this video has been an interesting and informative look at our position controllers. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. For further inquiries, please check out our website.